In today's video, I want to show you this NFED half-wave antenna that Guzizu sent me for review. This one's a little different than most of the NFED half-wave antenna kits on the market today because it uses a 64 to 1 ballon instead of a 49 to 1 ballon. And is that really a big difference? Well, we're going to find out later in the video. I've obviously already taken everything out, but the antenna kit comes in this nylon carry case. We also get an instruction sheet, and you can see this design is by BH7JYR. We also get a length of Dacron type rope. Here's the 64 to 1 Unun, and we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. And then here is the length of wire. This looks like it's about 14 gauge. And you can also see there is the coil for 80 meters and then an egg insulator on the far end. So here's the 64 to 1 Unun. You can see it's in a pretty heavy duty weatherproof case. Starting at the top, this free hole is used for our anchor rope. And then these other two are consumed with the radiating wire and act as a strain relief. You can see the wire loops through and it's even zip tied up here. Now the radiating wire attaches right here to this threaded insert on the right side. There are three more threaded inserts here, but I don't believe they connect to anything. But I guess we'll find that out later when we take this apart. Down at the bottom, we have our SO239 connector. And it's important to note that one of the fasteners that hold it on is sort of an Allen head screw and the other one is a Phillips. This Phillips head screw is intended to be used to connect up your counterpoise wire should you choose to use one. And we're gonna take a closer look at that in a few minutes. Now on the back of the box, you can see engraved into the plastic, there's some information about this unun. This here tells us that we need to use less than 150 watts on sideband and less than 100 watts on CW and less than 80 on digital modes. Down here in the middle, there is some Chinese writing and then there's some instructions in English below that. And then you can see on the back, there are four screws and presumably if we remove those, this will come apart. Now, as far as the radiating wire goes, there's nothing written on the jacket, but I believe this is 14 gauge wire and it feels relatively flexible, although it is kind of heavy. You can see at the far end, there is a plastic egg insulator that we can use to tie off to. And then you can also see that right here we have a strain relief and the wire is doubled back. So if we need to do any tuning to lengthen or shorten the wire, we can just unloosen this and adjust as needed. And then closer up to the unun side of the wire, we have this coil. And this is what allows the antenna to work on 80 meters. It's pretty cold outside today, maybe around 20 degrees Fahrenheit. But that doesn't stop us New England hams, especially when there's a new antenna to test. So let's get outside and try this thing out. Before I show you the antenna setup here, I'll mention that I had some trouble getting this thing set up in the yard yesterday. I found I just didn't have the room for it. The wire is actually almost 130 feet long, and I guess I thought my yard was bigger than it was. My original plan was to mount the feed point of the antenna right above the door. I've got a hook over there and then run the far end off over there to one of the trees. But the problem was the tree wasn't far enough away. So I ended up having to bring in my car and I've got the feed point mounted in the car up here. Let's take a closer look. So you can see I've got the un untied off here with a short piece of rope just to the latch on my back glass. And then you saw my counterpoise wire just came unclipped. Now I tried using that little screw that's up in there to kind of attach the wire, but because this shroud is here and there's just not enough clearance in there, I really couldn't do it. So I ended up using an alligator clip and it stays on there as long as I don't touch it. Now it is about 10 degrees warmer out here today than it was yesterday. But I've got 12 feet of coax or so run inside the car and we're going to set up in there where it's fairly warm. Now it's hard to get an actual measurement on the length of the wire, but I tried yesterday and I got about 128 feet or so, give or take. And you can see I've got it stretched out all the way over to that tree on the far end where that ladder is. In fact, why don't we walk over there and take a look at that end. Now here's a look at the far end. You can see the anchor point is there a few feet above the top of the ladder, maybe about 15 or so feet off the ground. Now I wanted to get this a little bit higher, but my ladder extensions are kind of frozen together, so I couldn't extend the ladder to get it any higher, but this should work for testing purposes. You can see I've just got an eye hook in the tree with about a foot or so of that paracord that was supplied with the kit. 
and then it's running off over there to the car. Now one drawback to using this heavy insulated 14 gauge wire is that it droops in the middle, especially with this 130 foot run. Now if I was mounting this permanently, I'd probably find a way to keep this a little bit higher. But again, for testing purposes, I think it'll be okay. I'm obviously sitting in the back seat of the car now, and I've got the Nano VNA hooked up to my coax. And you can see from all these dips, this antenna truly is covering all eight bands. Let's take a closer look at some screenshots I grabbed. Starting off on 80 meters, you can see the SWR is 1.25 at 3.81 megahertz. On 40 meters, we're looking at 1.76 at 7.32 megahertz. In this screenshot, I'm showing a 1.67 SWR at 10.56 megahertz, which is a little bit above the 30 meter band, but I don't think the SWR was too much higher than that in the actual 30 meter ham band. So the antenna should be usable on 30, but you might want to touch it up with a tuner. On 20 meters, we're looking at 1.395 at 14.34 megahertz. So on 17 meters, we're looking at 1.248 at 17.5, which is a little bit below the ham band. Now where the actual 17 meter ham band is, about 18.1, 18.2 megahertz or so, I think the SWR was still under two, but I didn't grab a screenshot of that. On the 15 meter band, we're looking at a low SWR of 1.08 at the bottom of the band around 21.090. I think up in the voice portion, again, the SWR was still quite low and under 1.5. 12 meter band, I didn't grab the actual minimum SWR for some reason. I'm one notch higher. Uh, 1.15 at 24.3 megahertz. The actual low point was within the 12 meter ham band, and I believe it was under 1.1. And then the bottom of the 10 meter band looks like it's at about 1.6 SWR. If you were to go higher into the FM portion of the band, I think we were seeing SWR readings around two or maybe a little bit above. So if that's where you want to operate, you might need a tuner for that. But the sideband portion of the band looked pretty good. So as we saw, the antenna looks like it's tuned up pretty well according to the Nano VNA results. But let's try it out in the real world. I've got my FT891 connected up, no tuner in line, and we're gonna tune around on each band and see if we can make a few contacts. I've tuned around on 80 meters for a little while and I haven't heard any signals. I don't know if that's because the antenna is so low we're not picking anything up or if there's just nothing to listen to. Now I have done a transmit test and the SWR is low, just like the Nano VNA said it would be. I guess I'll just try and call CQ and see if anybody comes back to me just so that we can make an 80 meter contact and really try this thing out. CQ, 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 November 1, November Uniform Golf, November 1, November Uniform Golf, calling CQ and standing by. Nobody's responding to my CQ either. I suppose if I were in a poda park and had myself spotted, I'd probably get a contact or two, but it's going to be tough hearing something this morning I guess. I guess we're gonna have to try 80 meters later in the day. Let's switch over to 40 and see what we can hear over there. Parks in the air, W3 NFT calling CQ Parks in the air. November 1, November Uniform Golf. November 1, November Uniform Golf. Good signal. Uh, I got you 10 over here in my park, US 5144. Okay, QSL. Well, hey, thanks for the activation today. You're uh, ranging anywhere between a 5.7 and a 5.9 here into Connecticut. Copy, copy the 5.9, 5.7 to 5.9 in Connecticut. Thanks for hunting today. 7.3. Okay, next, let's try 20 meters. I'm going to skip over 30 since I don't have a computer set up for any data modes and I lost my CW ability years ago. November 1, November Uniform Golf. Okay, QSL, you are also 5-3 Connecticut. Thanks for the activation today. Okay, 7-3, have fun out there. N1, NUG. I'm hearing plenty of signals over here on 17 meters, but I don't want to break in because these are all rag chews. So I think I'm going to skip that and go over to 15 meters for now. November 1, November Uniform Golf. Okay, 5-3, 5-3, November 1, November 
Uh, QSL, 5-3, Connecticut. Thank you for the activation. Thank you for 5-3, my friend. Uh, let me Connecticut. Yeah, QSL, the 5 and 9. I have you about 55, 55. I'm in western Kansas. QSL, Sierra. I'm hearing plenty of DX stations on 10 meters, but I'm having trouble busting the pileups to make those contacts with them. Probably because this is 10 meters and the antenna is low. As you saw, this antenna actually worked pretty good, despite the fact that it's pretty low to the ground. Now, we didn't actually make any 80 meter contacts, but I think that's more to do with the time of day and time of week than the performance of the antenna. When I transmitted on it, the SWR was real low. I just don't think anyone was out there to hear us. I don't know about you, but I'm curious to see inside of this thing now that we've tried it out. So let's take it back to the bench and take it apart. Obviously we've got the un on, on the bench. Let's get this thing taken apart. It looks like there's five screws here that'll need to come out. And then we may need to remove one or both of the screws that hold the SO239 in. Let's see. So I've got all the screws out. Let's see what's inside. Let's look at the back cover of the Unun first. Now, we've already seen the laser etching on the back, but if we look inside, you can see there's three foam pads that are designed to kind of push down and help hold the toroid in place, although it is already kind of glued in with, I guess, more of that foam stuff. It's double-sided on this side, whereas on this side, it's not. Now, you may immediately notice that around the outside, we've got weather stripping here on one side of the case. And that's because the other side is actually sort of a boss. You can kind of see it here if I hold it at this angle. And when this is flipped over, this boss pushes into the weather strip on this side and vice versa. This side over here is bossed and it pushes into the weather stripping here. I'm not exactly sure why they did it that way other than maybe so they didn't have to have a full piece of weather stripping that could break and fail. Either way, it seems like it should be a good design. Now it's also interesting that we have these three bosses on the back cover that made up to the three positions on the front cover where we've got these threaded inserts. Now that I've taken it apart, I've figured out that this threaded insert is for the screw that goes in and holds this thing together from the back. Looking at the business side of the Unun, I think we're dealing with a 2.4 inch diameter core, or what I guess we would normally call an FT240. I don't know what mix this is though. It's not printed on here anywhere. We'll assume it's probably a 31 or a 43, which would be common for an antenna like this. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this is a 64 to one on, on as opposed to a 49 to one on on and really the only difference is is that we have two extra turns another thing that's unique about this is that the windings on this side are all close together and these are spaced out normally on a 49 to one on on i usually see the windings all spaced roughly the same now you can pause the video and count these windings yourself if you want to but if we count along the inside diameter of the toroid, there are 16 total, which is what you would use for a 64 to one. If you had a 49 to one, you'd use 14 windings. Up at the top left, you can see that the wire has a ring terminal on it, and this is connected up to that threaded insert where we connect up the actual antenna wire itself. So now if we spin this around and look at the SO239 connection, you can see there is a 100 picofarad capacitor here. This looks like a 5% tolerance cap, and it is labeled TDK, so that's a brand name, assuming that this isn't a counterfeit TDK, hard to tell. But either way, you can see it bridges between sort of the center conductor and shield, and then you can see that this twisted pair is connected up to the body of the SO239, and this is where we would connect up our counterpoise wire. So overall, this seems like a pretty interesting design, and it looks like this case could be used for multiple configurations. Now that we're done looking at it, I'm gonna put it back together so that we can put this antenna back in the air. Now this antenna may not be the best choice for your average POTA activation where you're gonna go out and operate for an hour or two, just simply because it takes a lot of effort to put this thing up and you need so much space for it. Having said that, it might be a good field day antenna if you've got the room for it and a couple of friends to help you set it up. It also would probably work well if you're at a campground with a large enough site and you're gonna be there for a while. Because this antenna has a heavy duty weatherproof unun, 
and 14 gauge sort of heavy duty wire. I'd say that this is best suited for a permanent home station installation provided you have the room for it. So if you're looking for an antenna that covers 80 through 10 meters and you've got the room for it, then this may be one that you wanna consider. And if you do wanna take a closer look, there will of course be a link in the video description. 7.3 for now, and thanks for watching.